Tyler is in Illinois. Thank you for your guidance in Financial Peace University regarding the different types of insurance. It's one type of insurance I've never heard you talk about that I'm interested to hear what you have to say about self-defense insurance or concealed carry insurance. Um, well, I haven't talked about it, Tyler, for two reasons. One is I don't have it personally. Um, I am a firearms enthusiast. I uh, carry almost 100% of the time that you see me, at least where it's legal for me to do so. Obviously, if I'm in California or New York, I'm not able. But otherwise, if you see me, I'm just about always armed. Um, uh, the type of the, what I have personally done and what I've done with our team here is we've done um, extensive handgun training, active shooter training, um, and, and how to properly handle a firearm and basically how to avoid ever having to use one, um, like run, as an example. Uh, the chances of me being aggressive with a firearm are almost zero after all the training that we've had. Uh, it will only be to save my life or someone very near and dear to me's life. Um, it, uh, the chances of me doing otherwise with a firearm are zero after as much time as I've spent on this. So that's the way I've invested in insurance, so to speak. Um, that's not to say you shouldn't do both. Possibly you could do both. The type of insurance, you know, this falls under really what the category of gimmick insurance. Um, and with gimmick insurance, oftentimes what you get is the um, the idea of coverage, but not actual coverage. Now, I've not read these policies, so there may be some that have actual, decent, real coverage. But estimates are in the uh, firearms community that if you actually, God forbid, were to have to use your firearm and someone were to lose their life, even if they were a, a criminal in the process of trying to kill you, it probably is going to cost you a million dollars if you have it um, the, in defense. It's the, the process becomes just unbelievable, even if it's self-defense. And so, and a clear cut. So, I, I, you know, I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what people talk about in that community that it's, you know, again, as a, a deterrent to ever um, use a firearm if you can, if there's any possible way to avoid it. So, um, but in, anyway, the, um, so if you are going to buy it, I would want to go into great detail about what it does cover and what it does not cover. And then are you getting value for that? And are your likely scenarios actually covered? Um, uh, this falls under the heading of stuff like extended warranties and those kinds of things that usually I, I've not had good experience reading through the policies. Again, I've not read these particular policies. There may be some good ones out there. There's certainly going to be some that are better than others. Um, but are any of them worth it? I don't know. I don't own one. Um, and... Um, so that that's you know that, that that's why I haven't brought it up. I don't endorse stuff or tell people to buy things that apply to my life that I don't buy. I don't tell you to buy identity theft protection uh, from Xander Insurance unless I bought it, which I did buy it for me, every one of my kids, and every one of my employees, seven hundred and forty two of them. And so it's um you know uh, uh, so I don't you know I can speak very well into that. I do know that product line. I do know what the competitors are selling, and I do know that Xander has the best product on the market, and to prove that, I bought it. Um, so, you know, that, that's how I do endorsements. I don't need advertising endorsement money badly enough to endorse something that I don't personally believe or use. Uh, and, and so, since I've not do dove into this there may be someday they may bring me some proposal and i'll learn about it and i'll do it i'm not saying it's evil but um it falls under a heading of insurance that um uh, it's not it's not drawn it's not caught my eye and, and i've not personally done it and that's my my reasoning even though i am a firearms enthusiast and i i know that some of you are very scared about that, but I, you know, some of you live in areas of the country or grew up in families or in political uh, affiliations or situations where you, um, for me, a firearm is more like having a shovel in the garage. It's, it's been in part of my life, my whole life. And so I have no fear of that at all. Um, and so it's a, just a simple you know, it's like driving my car to work to put my to put my uh, 
you know, to, to make to put my firearm on in the morning. I don't I don't think anything about it. Um, I'm careful. It's a it's obviously a dangerous thing, and you have to be very careful with it. But some of you don't understand that, and I understand that you don't understand. But I'm, that doesn't mean I'm not going to carry one, just because you don't understand. So um, I mean, it's okay. And I'm not listening to the Dave Ramsey show ever again. Well, that's okay. You can do that too. That's you know, it's a free country. Because I, <laughs> because we have firearms. <laughs> uh, uh, not really, but it's a great joke. 